Hey guys, and welcome back to round four. We are switched names there. Um, I am actually Regina Angley. That wow, is this now. is news to me. Yeah, so, um, know, I'm is, Regina now. This is this is what we call an identity crisis. <laughs> 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 um, so, but welcome back to round four. Um, speaking of tournament experiences from earlier and um, about how you you know the friends you make along the way. We've got a pair of friends here who definitely did not want to play each other because this is one of those heartbreaking rounds. Um, so we've got for you Chris Donzo versus Jeremy o um, Odina, and it's again a heartbreak. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Yeah, I was talking with uh, with Chris earlier today, and he was like, "Hey, I, I don't need to go on stream if you don't want to." And I was like, "Whatever, Danzo." And then <laughs> when we saw we saw this match with Jeremy and yeah, Chris, he, we're he like, spoke it into oh, wow. existence. Exactly. Yeah, I wasn't even thinking about it when I woke up today. But then after he said that, all I could think was, "Oh, when are we going to get Danzo on stream?" I'm just kidding. But so. um, Jeremy <laughs> Odina, obviously a day two Worlds player. Uh, also, Chris Danzo has qualified for the World Championships before. And the last time we were in this venue, Regina, this exact building. Chris Danzo won the midseason showdown. So he has, you know, he, he's got some momentum he's in, got in that Island, New Jersey. He's got that here right yes. now. <laughs> I, yeah, and like, um, as you can see them like on stream, like they're just kind of like you're, like laughing right now. And uh, it's, it's always like really tough when you like you play against like really good friends because uh, it's one of those things where you're like, oh, like I want you to do well, but I also want to do well. And so we've got for you guys their team on stream. So on the left side, you've got uh, Chris with that Togekiss, Arcanine, Duraludon, Conkeldor, Grimmsnarl, and Rotom Wash. And on your right, Jeremy with Tyranitar, Togekiss, Rotom Wash, Dragapult, Ex uh, Excadrill, and Arcanine. Yeah, so looking at it, obviously one of the most common Pokemon that we see in the format is Togekiss. But Jeremy with the Sand Core, which he actually had um, back at the New York City Midseason Showdown uh, back all the way in January, if you can remember it. He also brought the Tyranitar team there, this time having Extra Drill as the potential sweeper. Uh, Extra Drill seems to be pretty strong hitting all hitting the Togekiss, the Arcanine, the Duraludon, the Grimmsnarl super effectively. I wonder on Chris's side what he has to counteract the potential Togekiss from Jeremy. Obviously Togekiss being a potential Dynamax Pokemon, even if it doesn't Dynamax, just the supportive follow me set. Uh, he doesn't, unless he has Rock Slide hidden on one of his Pokemon, doesn't seem to have many super effective ways to deal with the Togekiss <laughs> there. I think we have to give uh, give it to Jeremy there on the on the uh, the player card. He intro is in there, so awe of that. He's, he, he has the advantage right now going into game one. Yeah, um, especially with that, that trainer card as well. The Togekiss Excadrill, a lead that everybody knows, and either you love it or you hate it. Um, Chris also leading though with the Togekiss, but Grimmsnarl instead, so the Prankster, uh, like possibility for the screens in there as well. Um, but Togekiss, like you said, a staple, and here they are. Yeah, one way to get around uh, potential you know, damage from weakness policy and Togekiss is to set up your light screens and your reflects with the Grim Snarl. With that prankster ability, he's gonna he's gonna be able to um, he's gonna be able to get those get any status effects off very fast thanks to Prankster. Um, and this uh, it, it looks like Jeremy already needs to make an adjustment on turn one. Yeah, that Arcanine is coming in in place of that extra drill gets an intimidate into two Pokemon who kind of will just brush that off here. But again, Arcanine, uh, the intimidate matters less than its moveset. Snarl being its move of choice usually, but we have Chris going for the Dynamax on this first turn. Gonna be that Toby Kiss because um, Dynamax Grimstyle would be an interesting choice I mean, to especially have without Gigantic. Maybe <laughs> yeah. once, if that becomes legal, he might be cool. But no, Togekiss is the play. Yeah, and uh, Jeremy doesn't look like, well, no, he is going to be matching that Dynamax. We'll be getting two uh, Dynamax Togekisses on the field. So again, uh, not very, uh, not exactly a rare occurrence if you've been watching this meta. Yeah, definitely. It seems if these players might potentially just trade uh, max airstreams to continue the, the speed advantage here. Uh, something very common with a, a turn one Togekiss Dynamax. So it's going to see which one is going to go first, but uh, Grimstock going for the Reflect is going to get it uh, that get set up first because of Prankster, so that physical uh, barrier here is Max Airstream from Chris's Togekiss going to go into Jeremy's Togekiss first, gets plus one to both of his Pokemon, and the question is if uh, Jeremy's going to return that ma Max Airstream in kind. Oh, we're going to have that double boost, oh, but no, no we switch up. Yeah, Max Starfall instead is going to set up um, Misty Train first, but goes into Dragon Star. That is an easy knockout there. Uh, but so Grim's not going to be not going to be able to set up a light screen later on. Gets Train set up, but more importantly, gets that Pokemon knocked out now as opposed to later. But Chris does have that advantage with the plus one for the Max Airstream. 
Yeah, with the the Grim Snarl was in a really tough spot. Did he go for a light screen or did he go for a reflect? At the time, Extra Drill was out, obviously, so he could have been threatened from an Iron Head. But instead, by choosing ref Reflect, that meant the Max uh, the Max Starfall had no resistance at all because of no light screen. And even though even though the Grim Snarl looks kind of bulky, sometimes he he's he's very keen to be getting knocked out in one hit. Um, so now this this token is going to have to come back. Yeah, and Togekiss again from Chris's side going for another max airstream gets a plus two now in its speed. And Rotom here coming in gets a plus one for its speed. Rotom going for a Thunderbolt does a lot of damage uh, down into that Togekiss, but that's super effective. Ooh, gets the paralysis though. Unfortunately on that, um, no um, no weakness policy activation here, but Snarl from Arcanine, again, the move it's most well known for currently, is going to lower down that special attack for both the Pokemon here, which is more important than the Intimidate that we had seen from earlier. And finally a max airstream um, from Jeremy's Togekiss, not affected by that paralysis yet, but will hurt it later. Does get plus one for his Pokemon. Oh, gets a critical hit um, here, so uh, most likely going to be that scope lens variant of Togekiss that we've seen be so popular lately. Yeah, that, once we saw the weakness policy not activate, you really start running through your head where other types of Babiri items is. Uh, Babiri potentially is an option, but when you see so many critical hits coming from a Togekiss, you can expect so, uh, scope lens. Uh, I think this, this Rotom Heat, getting that paralysis really helps because now the Togekiss is slower than both of Chris's Pokemon out. Uh, so he would be threatened from another Thunderbolt from Togekiss. Uh, of course, Jeremy has a ground tape in the back, but he does not switch it in. And Chris choosing to use his last turn of Dynamax for another max air stream. So that Togekiss is at plus three and Rotom at plus two here. That Togekiss on Jeremy's side is just hanging on by a thread. But Rotom going for Nasty Plot instead is going to get a plus, uh, plus two to its um, special attack to make it actually a little bit more terrifying than it was before. Um, sorry, it's going to be at neutral now because of that snarl. So it did get uh, minus one from the earlier snarl as well. So um, Chris, I think, just trying to circumvent that those snarls later on. But Max Starfall one more time from Jeremy's Togekiss here going into that Rotom uh, and not Ooh. quite enough to knock it out and activates the berry instead from Rotom. That, that was a real pinch with the cliche of a pinch berry. Like that just barely hung on for its citrus berry and uh, the the nasty pot was smart out of out of Chris there because uh, the Arcanine being faster was able to snarl it and it was getting down to minus two. So that nasty pot usually would make you more uh, a bigger offensive threat, but instead this time around just puts him back to neutral. Obviously, he will be at a high enough <laughs> a special attack to take down the Togekiss here, and thanks to three turns of Max Airstream, that will guarantee both of Chris's Pokemon being faster than. Uh, both of Jeremy's, especially Ooh, after yep. par paralysis. Yeah, that was probably something like what, a follow me here. Right. But um, Air Slash going into Toga Kiss. So Chris's Toga Kiss is Air Slash and Jeremy's Toga Kiss picks up the knockout and a Rotom gets the Hydro Pump and connects it into that Arcanine. So like uh, you had said, those max air shoots really helping with that uh, boost in speed. But uh, like Arcanine holding on and also gets to chomp down on its berry in kind. <laughs> and, um, now we've got this Arcanine and then whatever Pokemon that uh, Jeremy wants to bring, but gets a Flare Blitz off first into Chris's Togekiss and does not do that not much enough. damage at all. Yeah, not enough for a knockout there on the oh, Togekiss. Yeah, reflect, um, the Re reflect is still up, right? We still uh, have, it's either five to eight turns depending on what the item is on, on the Grim Snarl. If he's holding the Light Clay, it will be the eight turns. Um, so. Uh, I don't think we've had too many turns yet to for in the game to have that decided. I think it's only been uh, four turns. So, uh, but Jeremy has a Rotom Wash of his own, uh, who obviously doesn't mind taking water attacks there. This Togekiss is really fast though, so he can try to go for Air Slash flinches. Yeah, there we go, an Air Slash from Togekiss, like you said, goes into that Rotom. So uh, if you're Chris, you are crossing your fingers. Rotom going for Hydro Pump <laughs> into Jeremy's Arcanine and is going to be able to pick up um, that knockout here um, as Arcanine is going to go down and it's up to Jeremy's Rotom to not flinch to be able to get a move off it. Ooh, Ooh, sorry, sorry about that, Jeremy. <laughs> okay, but so that was five turns though, so mm -hmm. that, meant it, that means he's not holding Light Clay. Um, so that would be, uh, yeah, that Rotom is, uh, is, is really sad about flinching that hurt. And Extra Drill <laughs> is coming back onto the field. And he's not Mold Breaker. Rest. No. So the, this Extra Drill doesn't really have a way of hitting uh, Rotom Wash super effectively on Chris's side. Of course, if he can keep up the consistent Hydro Pump connects, that would be nice for, for Chris to, to hit the Extra Drill. But Extra Drill's not going to take any damage this turn. Yeah, it, it is hiding behind that Protect on this. But Togekiss is instead going to go for that Rotom Wash, hoping for another uh, flinch there, most likely, as Rotom goes for the Thunderbolt into the other Rotom on Jeremy's side. So that Protect... Uh, 
even though, you know, Jeremy decided to use it this turn, it was kind of uh, unfortunate for that extra drill because it wasn't targeted at all. But his... Another, another flinch! flinch. Yikes! Uh, but is able to at least chomp down on us very this turn to get back some of that uh, health. Yeah, ev eventually this Rotom has to break through at some point. Like you, you would say, obviously, the odds are in Togekiss's favor every time he goes for the Air Slash that he will flinch. But sometimes, especially now that there's no Air Slash, Could get uh, on that he's not going to flinch here, <laughs> but it actually was going to take a lot of damage. Yeah, that heat wave hitting both Pokemon as Rotom on Chris's side is going to go uh, and connect another Hydro Pump into the extra drill, pick up that knockout. Um, and now that it is this Rotom who can actually move this turn going for an attack and is going to use Thunderbolt uh, into that wrote him as well and oh, lives on one <laughs> does not pick up this is this is just a rough match right now for jeremy because that is uh real unfortunate that's brutal honestly that the thunderbolt didn't i thought he would have targeted down the togekiss yeah. since it was it was causing so much trouble and maybe your rotom could beat the other rotom in a one-on-one -on -one i guess it's a thunderbolt exchange that you don't want to like deal with right because there you go the, the thunderbolt doubling down into it um and now Jeremy, at least he didn't flinch from the from the air slash this turn and speaking of the knockout on uh, Chris's Rotom. So now we actually get to see Chris's last Pokemon at least. Right, that's the benefit of Jeremy playing it out at least is he's able to see who Chris brought as his fourth and it, he does reveal the Kinkelder. Uh So he still has the information going into game two knowing what Chris had in the in the back potentially for either the extra drill or the Tyranitar, which Jeremy ended up not bringing there. Uh, I do want to quickly go back to a turn that I think where Chris played well uh, towards the latter, latter end of that game. When he went for the Heat Wave, he stopped going for the Air Slashes. One, potentially maybe because he thought, uh, he thought you know, eventually this, this Rotom Wash is going to break through, but also the Heat Wave being double target covered a potential Focus Sash on the extra drill. We hadn't seen the item being revealed yet at that point, so combination Hydro Pump and Heat Wave was able to to ensure, since they both hit, that it would knock out the extra drill before he would get an attack yeah. off. So I think Chris played that game very cleanly all the way from the beginning all, all the way through, and he, he deserves that win. Yeah, and it's interesting because um, that first turn where um, Jeremy's uh, Togekiss was Dynamax, right? He went for Max Starfall instead of Airstream, which was kind of different than what we've usually been seeing from people because the most important thing about this game is like that speed control. And I, I think here, you know, you have so many of the same Pokemon that you can like want, kind of want to bring, but I think the tough choice is if you're Jeremy and you have an Excadrill and we know it's got Mold Breaker, right? Like you don't have a way to help support that. And like, do you change that this turn, or do you just do you just leave Excadrill behind? Right, and there's also no Grass type to be as Rotom Wash because of Levitate. Its only weakness is Grass. Uh, I think he could just try to keep playing those Togekiss Reindeer games and matching Max Airstream. Uh, Jeremy's fault in that in that game was he was rewarded initially by getting the one-hit KO on Grim snarl but he actually paid for it later on because because to chris's togekiss and by effect the rotom were faster than both of jeremy's pokemon so this turn one as it very often in vgc 2020 matches is very pivotal maybe he pivots to a dragapult type of, of sweeping in this matchup instead of opting for the togekiss because if you can get the dragapult set up uh very strong max warm winds uh will be will be pretty hard into the rotom even if it's not super effective yeah, so we'll see exactly how Jeremy chooses to adjust as we go into game two. And he's actually leading with Excadrill and Rotom, uh, so no Togekiss for this lead. But Duraludon and Arcanine is also going to be the lead of choice now here for uh, Chris. It's a little bit different from game one as well. Gets an Intimidate. Uh, not ag Again, not, not super important into Rotom, but really important on that Excadrill. Absolutely. So even though he's Intimidated, he's still... It, the Jeremy is still able to threaten super effective damage onto both of Chris's Pokemon. Uh, great synergy by Exodrill and Rotom next to each other because Exodrill is free to Earthquake since Rotom has the uh, the Levitate ability, so he's not going to get hit by that spread move there. Of course, you do have to wonder how much damage this is going to do uh, to Chris's Pokemon since the Exodrill is intimidated. I likely expect another Dynamax out of Chris this turn. It looks like he made an adjustment this time around instead of having Togekiss, he has Arcanine and Duraludon. We know Duraludon is seen as a, a very... Uh, a, a very strong Dynamax Pokemon in this format, so that might ha be what he opts for here. Uh, but Jeremy decides to switch up his plan because of those Intimidates. Yeah, that Arcanine coming into play for Exodrill, so kind of like game one, uh, gets an Intimidate into both Arcanine and Duraludon, and actually double, double switch. Yeah, double switch here from Jeremy. Togekiss is coming into play for that Excadrill, so uh, it is going to be an interesting uh, turn here, for because Jeremy will just be taking straight damage, and Chris is going for the Dynamax on the first turn, going to be that Duraludon most likely, because Arcanine again, a great supportive Pokemon, and you want those snarls, but yep, there's that big, uh, not quite tower yet. Not yet. Not, uh, not in 
this series, maybe in like series five or something, he'll be he'll be the big uh, tower. But he's just regular massive Dynamax. Oh, that is that was actually really good switch from Jeremy because that uh, Arcanine. So Chris's Arcanine couldn't connect that Willow list, but. Uh, max Overgrowth from Duraludon is going to bring us Grassy Terrain onto the field and doesn't do very effective damage um, thanks to the fact that it is an Arcanine and Togekiss on the field. Um, so those uh, switches actually really helped out. Like Togekiss took almost no damage from that. Yeah, that was a, a and actually a pretty beneficial double switch. Usually uh, a lot of players sometimes don't want to double switch because you, you lose a lot of momentum and potentially take a lot of damage on your switching. But that time Jeremy was, was taken pretty well, obviously uh, calling that Will-O-Wisp from Arcanine there and then the grass attack, which would have done a lot to Rotom instead being resisted by Togekiss. And I think the Togekiss play is strong here on turn two and he'll have the Dynamax advantage later on when Duraludon's already, already down. This this Tokus will have more turns of Dynamax later on. Yeah, Tokus is going to be the Dynamax choice here for Jeremy. So we'd seen Max Starfall and Airstream from it earlier on. Um, but Arcanine, able to connect a will o -Wisp now into that Togekiss, so does get the burn damage and that uh, that HP drop every turn. Arcanine on Jeremy's side gets the Snarl uh, connecting with both, so it does drop uh, the special attack onto both of these Pokemon, and that's going to be really important for that Duraludon as Max Airstream from Jeremy's Togekiss goes into the Arcanine, gets a plus one to both um, his Arcanine and the Togekiss, which, again, a different change for him because he decided to go straight for those speeds. Right, and if he has max lightning or max steel spike, he can hit the uh, the token super effectively, but not enough. Yeah, the Dynamax is so important in that aspect that it gives you that nice boost of HP, and so you do get the defense boost here for a Duraludon and for Arcanine. And again, there was no weakness policy proc in game one, so um, like that that Togekiss is just taking it and not really doing anything past that. It's just taking burn damage. Right. If this Duraludon is a special attacker, like you know most of the Duraludons are with Flash Cannon, uh, that Snarl from Jeremy's Togi, or excuse me, Togi his the Snarl from Arcanine there was actually pretty pivotal uh, because it left Togekiss pretty healthy around half of its HP. That burn is interesting though because he will be taking that residual damage, uh, a small percentage of his health every turn. So I don't expect the Togekiss to be sticking around for too long. So Jeremy really has to take advantage of these three turns of Dynamax while he has them. Yep, and that plus one max actually means that Jeremy's Arcanine is now faster, gets a Snarl, um, and activates the Berry actually on Chris's Arcanine thanks to that. But Duraludon is at minus two special attack. Max Airstream from Jeremy one more time is going to connect into that Arcanine. He's going to pick up the Knockout here and then give another plus one to speed to both of his... Uh, Crit! Both. Oh, <laughs> I'm not sure that that mattered though on that Arcanine. Um, but the plus, now Togekiss is at plus two, but again, it's still on its own timer because of that burn. Um, and Duraludon going for the Max Steel Spike, so another plus one into its defense and is not actually going to be oh. Yeah, like that, those snarls are just way too good at this point. And that's the downfall of a turn one Dynamax is you're really stuck to that plan no matter what. So he can't, it's not like he can switch out right now with his Duraludon to reset those special attack drops from Snarl. He's pretty, like you can do it obviously, but you're not really taking advantage of the uh, Dynamax while you have it. So he's stuck in this position right now that he is minus two on his special attack. What he can do this, what Chris can do this turn is switch out the, the Duraludon into someone in the back, either his Togekiss or maybe he brought Conkeldur again. That would be able to reset Duraludon's special attack stats, so it would be doing more damage. But when it comes in, uh, it's likely facing down uh, a plus two speed Arcanine that can that can hit it with a strong Flare Blitz, a neutral Flare Blitz, uh, potentially, and it might not be able to do too much back to it. And of course, there's still that Excadrill in the back on Jeremy's side that threatens Duraludon too. So it is Conkeldor as the last Pokemon of choice here for Chris as he switches out that Duraludon in place of it. Arcanine from, ooh, from Jeremy's, um, sorry, on Jeremy's side is going for the Snarl. Misses the Conkeldor on switching, so. Hits the important uh, target, though. Yeah, hits, hits the Rotom, so, um, but Max Starfall as the last move here from that Togekiss gonna go into that Rotom is to pick up a knockout wow. um, and gets us Misty Terrain. So, oh, that- I Yeah, think I was that gonna say, I think he crit. I think he crit yeah, that Yeah, that one. critical hit definitely mattered on that one. Um, but the Togekiss, despite being burned and taking like, what, two, two uh, Max Steel Spikes is like hanging on very, very uh, tightly to this field right now. Like, it's 
so close to being knocked out. And that's all thanks to the Arcanine with the two Snarls. That's why he was able to, this Togius has been able to hang around. You, know, you wouldn't expect a Pokemon weak to steal to take two max steel spikes and, and just be chilling like the Togekiss was that whole time. Obviously, he will go down eventually from burn, if not from one of these two attacks from Chris's side. But having his, but Jeremy having both his Pokemon with the plus two speed puts him in the advantage that he can go for an air slash into Conqueror being super effective, and then potentially uh, he can switch out this Arcanine so he can reset the Intimidate later on. Yeah, Arcanine say goodbye for now as we see Rotom Wash come into play here for Jeremy. But Conqueror going to hide behind a protect because, like you said, could be taking an air slash from Togekiss. But instead, going for a Dazzling Gleam in uh, just to cover both targets is going to connect into that Duraludon, which no longer has the special attack drop. I'm um, draw down going for the Thunderbolt. So uh, finally knocks out that Togekiss. I was going to like pop off if it went into that, uh, into that road. I was going to be like, oh my gosh, that was great. <laughs> uh, but no, instead goes into that Togekiss. He didn't need to preserve the Togekiss anymore. It, it had done its job. Of course, Arcanine switching out means that it loses that speed buff. Uh, but that... But Jeremy is now able to switch his, his extra drill in for free because of Togus being knocked out, who he can hit the drought on super effectively there. I think the Dazzling Gleam was potentially smart from Jeremy because that doubled your chances of critting if you if you were able to hit both of them. But this high horsepower oh, takes yeah. drought on down. Yeah, and that, that extra drill was like, I'm back from that, that turn one that I switched out. I'm here to take down the Duraludon. And Rotom is just like, hey, this is a nice time for me to go for the nasty plot, get that plus two to my special attack, and just make sure anything that I hit into that Conkeldo is just going to hurt. Green Punch from Conkeldo goes into Rotom. Does a decent amount of damage here. Um, no HP recovery because it did hide behind to protect that first turn, but uh, Conkeldo is not in a great place right now. And we know that the Conkelder, obviously, since he's been on the field for multiple turns, a Flame Orb hasn't activated. Uh, but we do have Misty Terrain up right now. So actually, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's not confirmed if we have the Flame Orb or not or if he's Assault Vest, potentially. Um, but this double <laughs> this double target. Two, yeah, that, that plus two Thunder Bolt is absolutely I love high. it. I love that they gave Rotom Nasty Plot. Uh, it's it's a, a a new move that he that all the Rotom forms have to add to their arsenal in Generation Eight. Uh, so many times you felt like, especially Rotom Wash, like maybe Rotom Heat had the 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 strength to be a strong special attacker, but Rotom Wash kind of felt like dead weight sometimes, especially uh, if you're using a defensive kind. So for for him to have a nasty plot option to increase his special attack, those Hydro Pumps, if they connect, and you know fingers crossed it, yeah. they connect. They they really mess up a lot of the Pokemon in the format for very strong neutral damage yeah and um i actually really appreciate the way that jeremy played this game because we were talking about that double switch out and i was actually really nervous for him because uh when you switch out like two pokemon like we had mentioned you know you are on the receiving end of damage and it just so happened that he understands the way that chris plays well enough to be like you know i can risk that this turn because i know what he's gonna do and um like it'll help me out later on in the end. Yeah, and we learned a lot from the Duraludon on there. Like we saw, uh, we saw Thunderbolt. We saw a potential Flash Cannon with the Steel Spike, and then uh, also Grass type. the, and yeah. then we saw Solar Beam too, yeah. which is uh, a move that he can pretty much uh, ideally only click Wild Dynamax because he doesn't have sin, he doesn't have Sun uh, to set that up. But that is a way to threaten the Rotom Wash, obviously, super effectively uh, if he goes for it. I think I I I think Chris I think Chris switched up obviously because he did so well in game one but he he veered too far away from his original game plan in game two and it somewhat cost him there so i would imagine uh since chris ha had that success in game one he'll probably switch back to that i that idea with a lead of a toga kiss and going for the dynamax there because uh you don't want to get caught flat-footed with your your minus two special attack they out on that you can't do anything to to save yeah and i think here too this isn't a mechanic i think most people like we'll think about until it's too late, but the Misty Terrain interaction with Flame Orb, right? Like, the big thing about Conkeldor is once that Flame Orb is activated, it's a terrifying Pokemon to deal with, but um, Jeremy being able to set up that, that Misty Terrain is kind of stopping that in its tracks, and um, now you have kind of think about, like, is he going to go for Miss, is he going to go for Max Starfall? Is he going to do Max Airstream? And then how do these two play off with each other in, in terms of, like, that plus B? Because Excadrill, we thought, you know, not super great with, like, without Tyranitar, but... The, the max um, airstream is really helping it out. 
No, absolutely, and I think the con the Conkelder is good against Tyranitar and Exegero, but really suffer or suffers against the rest of Jeremy's team. So you do wonder if Conkelder is even worthy of being brought here in Game Three. Such a such a pivotal game here. You go 4-0, you have a really strong chance later on in the rounds to top cut. Yeah, and we've got actually double Rotoms here on both sides, and actually Togekiss and Grimmsnarl. So partial fairies as well. So an almost mirror, but. Um, like Grimmsnarl helping set up and Togekiss in some way. They're both supportive yeah. fairies, right? <laughs> they both like to help out their friends and we are going to have a Dynamax from Chris. Is that going to be a Dynamax from Rotom? That would be pretty crazy. And it is. Yeah. It's not, I've it's seen with Rotom He and Rotom Mo being I've Dynamax Rotom pretty Wash. well. I, I, Rotom Wash, I have not seen as common of a Dynamax user as the other uh, very popular Rotom forms. But if it sets up a max geyser for itself or a potential max lightning with the same type of attack bonus into the Togekiss, we know the Togekiss is not weakness policy, so he doesn't have to worry about right. accidentally yeah. boosting it. A max lightning would be huge. Yeah, uh, it's going to be that Togekiss, though, for Jeremy in that Dynamax. And I got to hand it to Chris. He knows how to mix it up with what Pokemon he chooses to Dynamax. And like you said, if that's going to be max lightning into there after Grimmsnarl sets up, this is going to be... Uh, oh, it's Fake tears! Oh, this is going to be a big turn if uh, if it goes if it's into that Togekiss. Oh, oh, no, it's into the Rotom. Okay, so it's Max Lightning into that special defense drop uh, Rotom on Jeremy's side. It is a clean, easy Done. knock out there. That was, I mean, that's a strategy, right, that like you see people use a, a lot, like Grimstone with fake tears. Uh, but you set up Electric Terrain, which is going to be interesting because Rotom's not technically touching the ground. Right, so he doesn't get the boost yeah. from oh, it. Oh, it doesn't even matter but. because you go for the Max Starfall and you just erase that and you're like, here's Misty Terrain, don't bring out Conkeldor because it won't matter for you. Yeah, that it is interesting that uh, Chris, oh. with the critical hit, he didn't need it as yeah. we saw obviously in the first game. Uh, and now the Electric Terrain is gone. It was on the field for, you know, 15 seconds before Misty Terrain took over there. Uh, but he, he decided that the... the that the Rotom Wash on Jeremy's side was the bigger threat that turn to to take care of. Uh, I feel I feel like this, especially since this Togekiss is not weakness policy, you might have wanted to take that thing down as quick as you could. Um, a combination of fake tears and and max lightning into that Togekiss probably would have taken it down. But now this Dragapult without yeah. Dynamax is he's he's switching in here uh, and he's and he's against the Fairy type also in the Togekiss who would hit it with dazzling gleam. Uh, so this Dragapult making his debut in the round, but in a in a pretty tough position. Yeah, uh, does that mean he left the extra drill at home? But Dragapult is like, hey, you know what? I'm not in, I'm not into seeing that Togekiss. I'm going to hide behind a Protect right now. As Rotom goes one more time for that Max Lightning, goes into that Togekiss, and that is a hard target to miss. Uh, does a, does really good damage in there, uh, but not enough to get it to even halfway, and rewrites that Misty Terrain as well now back into Electric Terrain. So it is a battle of terrains in an interesting fashion as... Um, Togekiss goes for Dazzling Gleam, is going to connect into Jeremy's Togekiss and still doesn't get it into the yellow, but Max Airstream now from Jeremy is going to give him a plus one to both that Dragapult and that Togekiss uh, is just giving himself that speed advantage. He gets another critical hit, so definitely scope lens. Yeah, even with the crit, uh, Chris's to to Togekiss was able to hang on there, so that yep. shows just how how bulky this to Togekiss can get as a Pokemon. Uh, now, Jeremy has the speed advantage on both of his Pokemon with Togekiss. Obviously, Dragapult is like the fastest thing in the universe, so he didn't he didn't, <laughs> he didn't need it as much. Uh, but we still haven't seen an attack from the Dragapult, so we don't know if this is a physical attacker, a special attacker, some kind of mixed or a supportive, you know, Whoa, Wisp and Hex. I've seen that going around somewhat, too. <laughs> Excuse uh, me. <laughs> yeah, with, with Hex, where you do double damage if Ooh. their status. Uh, so he is at least a special yeah. attacker. Yeah. So it goes for the Shadow Ball into the Togekiss. And I was wondering, oh, gets a critical hit as well, too. So that was. Yeah. That didn't matter. No. But, you know, sometimes the critical hits are very, it, they're mentally. It hurts sometimes. mentally. I was just about yeah. to say. Uh, so Life Orb is going to be revealed for that Dragapult as Max Starfall one more time. This last Dynamax move here for Togekiss in it to that Rotom. Gets another, another critical hit. hit. And is going to bring back that Misty Train. And so like, I'm wondering if Jeremy was just trying to do enough damage to the Togekiss where he um, like, he could protect that Dragapult for at least one turn. But Max Lightning now in uh, from that Rotom into the Togekiss. And it's still not, not enough. enough to pick up that knockout. But he, at least Rotom, um, will be able to end his Dynamax turn, its Dynamax turns with Electric Train on the field for itself. And um, hopefully being able to bring in that Conkeldor. Yeah, we saw um, the previous turn, the combination Dazzling Gleam and Max Lightning was just enough to bring Jeremy's Togekiss to under half of its HP as a Dynamax. So uh, since he didn't have that partner also attacking it, that meant this Togekiss was able to barely hang on here. 
Um, now that the Dynamax is over, it's kind of like the, the big guns have been emptied here. Now you have to rely rely on your wits again at the end of this matchup. The Conkelder in against uh, a ghost type and a fairy type, so and he's also really slow. So he, this Conkelder is, is quite threatened right now, and that's why he's going to go for the Protect. There's no Mitzi's turn. Yeah, We're going to no find out this turn. Did, did Chris visit Ball Guy and get the Flame Orb that we all want? He's, he's in a few minority if he, did, if he did manage to get that Flame Orb, right? But Rotom is going to go down to a Draco Meter from that Dragapult. Is going to take a minus two to its special attack for those troubles, but it's going to mean Conkeldor versus a Dragapult, um, a Togekiss, and uh, whatever last Pokemon that Jeremy has in the back. Let me see it, yeah. Oh, yeah, there we go. There's it. The, all right. So um, I think we all were kind of, we all kind of knew at that point that it was going to be a Flame Orb, but again, that Misty Terrain, and I think that's why he chose to, to Dynamax Rotom, right? You're, you right. end up having Terrain Wars, and for him, it just so happened that this is how you end it. At least at this turn, he doesn't have to worry about the Dragapult because it's going to switch out because of the special attack drop from Draco. So he knows he only needs to target down the Togekiss slot, potentially. Uh, but a Mach Punch is Ooh, not enough, enough, even with the yeah. more boost. Oh, that's, that's, that's rough. Time I mean, that's, four resisted. Oh, yeah, I mean, like, that's, that's the only thing you could really do at that point. Um, and... Uh, yeah, you survived the Dazzling Blade. He wanted the crit that Jeremy got so often. In this well, if he got a crit Mach Punch, that would have taken it out. Then he has the Flame Orb Mach Punch onto Extra Drill. He still yeah. can't hit Dragapult, but, you know, it's yeah. worth a shot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, now you're just like, yeah, if only Kinkelder had, like, Scope Blend Super Luck, then you could maybe get, like, the crit. But, I mean, he finally knocks out this Togekiss, but it's not going to matter here because Extra Drill is going to be like, yep, I'm going to take care of this game for you. Goes for the Iron Head. Um, picks up the rest of the HP and gives the round to Jeremy. And Jeremy um, waves to the crowd, yep. knowing they're all rooting. For, that was well, a, that's a, that's a big match. Yeah, they were all that's in the stadium a, for and him. And he is the champion after all, or he's friends with the champion, at <laughs> he's least. In it, all the he's in the He's in the photo with uh, <laughs> with Leon there. I think one thing I noticed with, with Jeremy play, I can't even count how many times I've seen him on stream loot, like, come back 2-0 after losing game one. Like he does, it, he does it consistently. He uses game one as just information analysis, just receiving everything that he can from it. And then game two and game three, he just plays so perfectly. He's never, you know, threatened. Sometimes if I was game one, I'm like, oh, God, I'm already worried about lunch. We got the uh, extended <laughs> round. But Jeremy sticks in his game plan the whole time through and has the reverse 2-0 comeback. Yeah, I, it was just really well played by him because I think he understood what he needed to fix in game one to be like, all right, so I have to make sure I still have have um, that terrain up because I don't want Flamer to activate just in case. And then he had that wonderful double switch in game two. And then game three, it was just, it felt like the entire time, even with like um, Rotom like going down that first turn, he just kind of was like in the driver's seat. He was like, you know, I know exactly what I'm gonna do. We're gonna fight um, terrain wars. And then from there, it's like, my Pokemon are all set up and there's nothing you can really do about it. Yeah, and we had we showed a display of very strong fairy types in that matchup. We got some awesome fairies behind yes. us here. Some my favorite one is actually being favorites. blocked. Um, I love by yourself. Level. Yeah, you, sh you should just cast like that the whole time just I to <laughs> show off the slurp up. I mean, it's it's always again like it's always really hard to play against one of your friends, and I'm sure they like hopefully had fun at least playing. Um, but we will be going to an interview with Jeremy um, by uh, Brendan actually. So um, don't go anywhere. We'll have that interview in like five seconds. <laughs> Count. <laughs> Welcome back, trainers, and thanks for joining me in the interview lounge here in Island, New Jersey at our mid-season showdown. I'm Brendan Lewis. I'm now joined by Jeremy Odena, who is the victor from round four. He's sitting at a nice four. No, how's, how, how are you feeling, Jeremy? How's your day going? Uh, I felt very well coming into today, and I'm just trying to continue that momentum, and um, it's good to get a win against one of my best friends. Mm -hmm. All right. You said you, f you felt good coming into the day. Are you still feeling good at this point in your turn? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. for sure. Yeah, yeah. I hope so. 
Okay. You, know. <laughs> you left a little bit of doubt over oh, there, no, so no, I figured I'd, I'd... I'm feeling good. Good, good, good. Um, so I talked a little bit to you about your team choice, and it seems like for most of the format, you've been running like pretty much the same like Ted core with, with <laughs> Tyranitar stuff, right? Um, and and why do you continue to go back to that core specifically when a lot of players seem to be moving away from it? Uh, I, I didn't really use... Excadrill and Tyranitar in, in, you know, in unison mm -hmm. for the most of the season, but Tyranitar by itself, as well as Togekiss, are just incredibly strong. Um, there's very few things that can take down Tyranitar without popping its weakness policy, mm -hmm. especially when it's Dynamax. Um, maybe a close combat from a, uh, a, um, a Scrappy or something like that, but other than that, Scrappy. there's very few things. <laughs> there's actually nobody's using Scrappy, so right. I think it's a pretty easy, easy pick. All right, and what goes into your selection? I, n I th assume you've been a, an Arcanine fan for quite a long time now, although I th might be going away come mm -hmm. March 1st here. Um, but specifically about your Rotom choices, that's something that's kind of been up and down over the course of the format and now seems to be coming back a little bit more, mm -hmm. uh, especially with Nasty Plot. So can you talk about your choice of the Pokemon and, and then what kind of set you're running on it? Yeah, that was kind of like an inspiration from um, a lot of the uh, the Japanese people that I like to watch. Mm -hmm. And um, I have other texts on the Rotom, and I, I don't really want to reveal oh, that's it. That's fine, that's yeah. fine. Yeah, but it's, um, it's, it's, it's really Japanese-inspired, even though I, I usually don't like to go that route. But I think at this point in the format, it's um, considering there's other ways to, to debuff um, your, oppo your opponent's attack stat, you know, with Intimidate or Will-O-Wisp, another Pokemon. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a, a nice way to catch people, people by surprise. Um, you know, Rotom has a pretty good um, speed stat as well, so I'll speed things like Gyarados. In this format, definitely, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and another question about your team real quick before I pivot into something else here is, is uh, obviously Togekiss was kind of like the center piece of your game plan against mm -hmm. Chris, and I assume the centerpiece of a lot of your game plans in the format right now. And you chose Scope Lens or, or Razor Claw. Mm -hmm. Either that or you, you got a lot of really good luck on stream, but <laughs> it seems likely that that was your item. Um, can you talk about specifically your item choice on Togekiss for this, this tournament? So I've been mostly running Barberry, and I, I still kind of favor it, mm -hmm. uh, but it just felt too easy of a, of a choice to make when you're in such situations where you're snarled down to maybe minus two or three, mm -hmm. and you're in front of a Conkeldur, and they feel comfortable. And you can just crit your way out of a bad a bad spot. Mm. So it's it's cheesy, but you know at this point I, I feel kind of silly not running it. So I just went for it. Yeah, it seems like a good a good I, like even on supportive togs, I, I I feel like it might even be better than Babiri just because mm -hmm. it gives you the opportunity to go into a match like you just had and and be the offensive threat without a lot of offensive investment. Yeah. So it seems favorable. Um, so I was. Uh, I, I don't know if we've talked about it on stream at all, but obviously you're a player that's from New England. I'm a player that's from New England, and we're down here in a, in a region that is known for being pretty strong. But on stream, you just showed up Danzo, who is obviously a local. Do you feel like there's any sort of regional rivalry, or feel you feel anything about the regions yeah. uh, interacting at all? I think um, I think New York in general is or New Jersey, the, the tri-state area, is just kind of a, a cocky area, you know. <laughs> you just got to bring them down to earth and understand that. Boston's here, yeah. and we're trying to win. <laughs> yeah. We're here to win. We're here to win. I was sitting here uh, in, while you were playing with, with Maeve, who's from the Northeast, and then with Justin, and Justin was talking so much game immediately after Chris took game one, and I was like, dude, <laughs> like, what's going on here? Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> So that's, uh, that's one for Boston, zero for New Jersey, for those of you counting at home. Jeremy, thanks for coming by the interview lounge. We're going to take a short break, and uh, some of our team will be back in just a couple minutes uh, with the analyst desk, so stay tuned. <laughs> 